As you may have seen, I put out a video a couple days ago about Stinger transitions in OBS. Very, very useful part of OBS and what it has to offer. Not everybody uses the Stinger transitions mostly because they don't know about it and also they don't know how to utilize it properly. Nowadays, you can get them anywhere. You could buy them on websites. You could hire someone on Fiverr to make one for you. But if you don't want to go ahead and pay someone to do it, rightfully so, I understand that completely, you can make one very easily. And especially if you have a logo of your own. Welcome back to the Rebel Tech Channel. I'm Justin, and in this video, we're going to be talking about Stinger Transitions and going through each step that I took to make that simple transition for your stream. But before we get started, if you have any questions, comments, or anything whatsoever, please leave it down in the comment section down below. I'll be happy to answer any questions you guys have about Stinger Transitions, uh, Adobe, things that I worked on, my videos that I've had in the past, uh, gear that I've talked about, or anything whatsoever. I have, I really, really enjoy having conversations with you guys. And if you want to ask me more directly, I stream every Saturday afternoon, right? Four or five o'clock. I start on this channel and then I switch over to my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash ghetto happy, where I play video games and just hang out and talk to you guys. Also, if you found this video helpful, entertaining or anything whatsoever, please leave a like and consider subscribing. All right, so without messing about, let's get into this Stinger transition. Like I said, it's a very simple transition, but you need to have a couple of things before you do it. Now, what I did was I have my logo here, my ghetto happy smiley face, and we're going to animate that very simply to make this transition. And if you've seen my OBS video on Stinger transitions, you will know exactly how it comes out. The issue that I had with this is the image that I have isn't 1920 by 1080, which is the format for my stream. So what I did was basically took a picture that I knew that was 1920 by 1080, threw it in here to make the sequence here, 1920 by 1080. Then I just delete that, bring this in, scale the frame size, and there you go. There's the way to start it. From here, we start throwing in keyframes and animating it. So first off, if you want to make this like I made it, let's start off with making those keyframes. So to make a keyframe in Adobe, basically you go to effects controls up there in the corner and you're gonna go to motion. This motion section uh, helps you adjust the position left and right and the position up and down. Also, you could change the scale, uh, the rotation, and all tough stuff like that. So for this animation, we're going to be focusing on the scale and the rotation. So the idea for this is it's going to start off from nothing, coming out, rotating as it's coming out, filling the screen, at which point in OBS, your transition will happen and the layer will change from one scene to the other without the viewer seeing it, then go back in and just back to normal. So you put a keyframe here with that little clock, and make it small. After that, you need to figure out your timing. You could always adjust it later, uh, the timing, but get a rough estimate of how fast you want this to go. From what I remember, when I was doing this the first time, this is not gonna be exact to the, the first time I did it, but maybe I could perfect it a little bit more. Your transition doesn't necessarily have to be like that long. Like right now, this is a four second clip. You probably don't need a four second clip. So we're gonna get this down to, let's say two seconds. A little bit more. We're starting off at zero. Well, at the halfway point, let's go to the halfway point. So at the one second mark, at the one second mark, it should fill up the screen. A 
like that when all the yellow here is in frame. But that's not the only thing that's going to be going on in this transition. If you want it to go in and out, just a really like zoom in and out, just do it like that and then go back. But if you want to add a rotation, you got to do the same thing with your rotation keyframes. So you go back, make a keyframe here. If you want to match up perfectly, which you probably should, use that little arrow there. It will go right to the next keyframe and it will match up. At this point, I think 180 degrees should be fine because we're going to make a full rotation as it's going. Next up, it's going to go back just a second before so that you can actually see what's going on. And at that point, you're going to be at 0 and 360. Sure, you can uh, do it more or less. It, it, just do the 360 and you will have the full rotation. Otherwise, if you go, oh, I'll put it back to zero, it's going to rotate back the other way. You can do it that way, like a little record scratch kind of thing, and you can make that sound if you want. It's a good idea, actually, but um, that's, that's for another time. Uh, maybe one day I'll do like variations of this. Actually, I will do a video in the future of variations. Uh, but this is just the simple way to do it. So if you were to just look at that, it comes out, rotates, and back, rotates too. Let's see how it looks. There you go. There's your transition. That's pretty much it. You know, when I did this the first time, figuring that out was a little bit more complex. I don't know why, but that's the way it was. So that is how you get the keyframes in line and properly made. The next step is exporting it. Now, if you're in After Effects or something like that, it's made for animations and everything like that. When you're in Premiere, you got to make sure that you got your export specs just right. So what you're going to do is you're going to do Control M. At this point, we're not going to do audio, but remember, we need to have this as QuickTime and Animation. This Animation drop-down option is to allow you to export with a transparent background, meaning if your image is a PNG, it will cut out the background and just have the PNG image. It's kind of like exporting the images, like if you've seen uh, my video on a border for your camera, exporting as a PNG allows you to have a transparent background. 1920 by 1080, you're good there. Maximum render quality, maximum render quality. And then click 8BPC plus alpha. That's that option. The, the animation using QuickTime and animation as your uh, presets will unlock this as an alpha. You don't have any audio. If you have audio, you could put that there. Uh, but in this case, it doesn't. It will have audio eventually, but I have to figure out what I want and maybe I'll make something on my own. Maximum quality. Anything else in here that I want? No. And we're ready to export. Okay, now we're back in OBS. We're gonna choose that stinger, that specific stinger. Right now we have my original one, but we're gonna choose that one and see how it worked out. So as you can see here, it's the GHAP test stinger is what we used, or what we made, with an MOV. It's an MOV file. I don't know the exact timing, but we're gonna figure that out in just a sec. So we got stinger option, the file is selected, now we change. You know, that's actually pretty damn good. So if you go back, maybe a little bit sooner, you see it was a little uh, late there. So we're gonna go 1500.
Maybe just a little bit more. Go 14. Fourteen's good for that. So because we have the export or the sequence, I should say, of the Adobe pro project be 10, 1920 by 1080, it translates to this palette here as 1920 by 1080. That's why I, I added that later. If your image is 1920 by 1080 or it matches the palette that you're going to in OBS, you're good. So just make sure it matches. That's all. Now, that's, of course, if your palette or your display is like that in OBS. If it's something different, make sure it matches. All right. So that is how you make a Stinger transition with a simple logo. Could be yours. Could be something you may have uh, bought or anything and using Premiere Pro to do it all. And you can see that it works just fine. You can animate them however you want, uh, as long as it fills up the whole screen to mask and hide that transition behind it, you're good. And there's plenty more ways to do it. There's plenty more uh, extreme ways to do it and really get something really cool. But to get started, to get something out there, and to get something that's a little bit catchy to the eye. And I highly recommend just doing this simple one just to have it. And it's not something that is going to be the end all or be all. It's just a stepping stone. And it's the next point of your content creation. I have said this before, and there's something about, and there's something to having a piece that you've created on your stream or in your content uh, as opposed to buying something it's a sense of pride and it's a sense of i did that and maybe it's not perfect maybe it's not the greatest but you did it and there's something to be said about that that all being said thank you all for watching hope you all enjoyed it hope it helped and i hope to see you guys put things out if you guys make these things and uh have your own versions of this uh please uh send them to me uh i leave links and on the youtube channel there are links to my uh twitter uh or just a link just one twitter uh just tag me in it and say hey i created this because you showed me that's fine i'd be happy to see you guys uh put out stuff and try to make it better i hope you guys make it better because I want to push myself. Uh, I, like, if I see something better than what I did, I need to figure out how to do it and then make mine better. And we're going to push each other and get each other to a better level of content creation, working together to do it. So, yes, please leave a like. Please leave a comment. All that stuff. If you want to check me out on my stream every Saturday afternoon, uh, 5, 6 o'clock, 4, whatever I feel like getting on there. No later than 6, usually. I'll be on this channel for about an hour doing some dot art, and then I switch over to Twitch where I play video games. Right now it's Assassin's Creed Unity, uh, getting back into the French Revolution of uh, history. And uh, yeah, so uh, as always, be safe, be kind. If you go out, please wear a mask, and I will see you in the next video. Arno, for the love, get off the pot. Good life lesson. <laughs>